All right, we're on the record in the case of the Commonwealth versus Brett Hankison, but out of the hearing of the jury. Um, and Mr. Matthews, you wanted to say something more about the instructions? Your Honor, last night uh, I received what I assume is the finalized version of the instructions. I note that they do not include any of the justification requests that I made, nor the Graham versus Connor requests that I made. And I would simply renew my request that the court consider adding those, particularly uh, Graham versus Connor and the uh, choice of evils instruction in 503.030. Um, I understand you've already ruled on that, but I'm renewing my motion for the record. All right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> So I think as I had said yesterday, I believe um, 503.120 precludes the self-protection instructions, the protection of other instruction, um, the, cho the, the choice of evil instruction, choice of evils instruction. I also wanted to say just a little bit more about that. In reading the case law regarding this um, justification defense, the defendants that I read about in the cases um, that discuss choice of evils acknowledge breaking the law. They say, I broke the law, but here's why I broke the law, which was to avoid an even greater evil, um, such as a defendant who, uh, say, is a convicted felon, not allowed to be in possession of a firearm, and he finds a firearm, say, out on the street and picks one up and says, well, I did this to preclude a young child from getting hold of it and causing injury to the child. Um, so he is saying, yes, I know I'm not allowed to be in possession of a firearm as a convicted felon, but I did this to avoid a greater evil. That's not what Mr. Hankison said on the stand yesterday. He was asked whether he thought he had done anything wrong, and he said no. Um, therefore, he's not saying that he chose one evil over an even greater evil. So I just don't see, in light of that, as well as I think 503.120 precludes the giving of um, the choice of evils instruction because of the wanton um, nature of the offense uh, that is charged here, wanton endangerment. So, and then as far as the Graham versus Connor, again, I think that applies my reading of that, that was a civil rights action. Um, I've not been cited in any case law that says that that is to be applied in a criminal case. I don't think there's any different standard for a um, former police officer on trial. It doesn't change the law relating to wanton endangerment than it does for any other, any other citizen of the Commonwealth. So I will give the instructions that I have included in uh, the email that I sent to you all last evening, which are the three counts of wanton endangerment in the first degree. All right, so we'll finish copying those. Anything else to um, put on the record? Not on behalf of the defendant, Your Honor. No, no, but I, I do have one uh, issue, in, I guess, in the nature of motion and eliminate. Uh, in Kentucky, it, well, in most places, it's well settled that the, uh, the golden rule um, argument being that a attorney cannot, either prosecution or defense, cannot ask the jury to put themselves in the shoes of the defendant or a victim. Uh, in the case states versus Roman, uh, but it is settled. Uh, I also have an email or a memorandum sent by email from one of our appellate attorneys uh, that cites some cases. Most of them are old cases and most of them are, because most of the time this has happened, it's the prosecution who's done it. That in closings, the golden rule, prohibition against asking the jury to put themselves in the shoes of the defendant be imposed. All right. Mr. Matthews? Judge, that pretty much eviscerates my closing argument. Um, I mean, I think the jury is entitled to be asked to put themselves in Brett Hankison's position because they're supposed to judge it from the moment that it occurred, not with 2020 hindsight, um, which is what 
the, you know, if, if you say, what do you think about what he did today? Well, what he did today may not be as reasonable as what he did on March the 13th in the 15 or 20 seconds that this whole incident occurred. And, and I think that the jury can be asked to try to imagine themselves in that position. Um, again, well, that's... I, I don't think, I don't think you, I think there's a way to phrase that without saying to the jury, put yourself in Mr. Hankison's position on um, the day in question. Uh, you know, and, and the law does not allow that to be done. So I'm going to sustain the uh, motion of the Commonwealth that um, you not do that, and as well that Ms. Whaley doesn't do that regarding um, Cody Etherton or Chelsea Knapper or the five year old. All right, counsel, would you approach for just a moment, please?